we want to thank everybody for coming to our webinar. As you know, uh, Phil and I have a commitment to putting these master classes together for our clients and people that are interested in learning some of these pieces with us um, on a monthly basis um, or as often as, as time permits. But uh, we came across something that we thought was really important that we need to talk about, which is the truth about patient financing. Uh, as you know, RepeatMD, uh, we have a financing component, a very successful financing component built into the technology itself. And we get a lot of questions about financing from our clients and prospective clients every single day. And in fact, we had a lot of questions uh, that we'll get into that we had to get answered for ourselves um, when we were aligning with financing because, you know, repeat MD, we're not a financing company, um, but we wanted to provide that as a, as a value add for our clients as part of our product. And so uh, very excited about the conversation today. And if it's your first time joining in, uh, I am Chris Shemenko, co-founder and VP of Biz Dev here at Repeat e. Repeat MD. Repeat is actually an award we give away at the end of the year. Um, and I'm joined as always by my handsome and uh, very fair haired CEO <laughs> and founder, Phil Sitter. Phil? <laughs> Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Um, th this was an important webinar for us because being a small business owner myself, I was a small business owner, I owned restaurants and scaled those restaurants and I had a lot of employees. And I guess we have a poll popping up here. Do you currently offer patient financing? Uh, let's go ahead and answer that. Um, I remember when I was running my business, I didn't necessarily have the time to check up on all of the little details of how much, you know, how much is this being charged or what's the price of this? Or, you know, this credit card merchant told me this price, but then I do my own math and it's a different price. And we recognized that with patient financing, it's very similar ground where, you know, they tell you certain things because they don't expect you to hire an attorney and go through every single line item or agreement or every single nuance of the contract. And the thing is, when RepeatMD, when we were looking for a financing partner, we had to do that. So we had to go through all of the legalese. We met with all the patient financing companies to select the best of class financing partner. And our goal here is just to give you the questions that we asked and the research that we found for patient financing and, you know, hopefully benefit you for that. Maybe there's questions that you knew, maybe you didn't know, maybe you have some questions uh, you know, along the lines of patient financing or why does one person get approved? Why doesn't another? And so our goal here is just like, look, we had to spend all the hours and all the money doing this. Why not share that information with our clients and let them know the right questions to ask? Because you probably have you know, you probably do have a financing company that you work with today. And our goal is to add value back to you. So you have um, at least all of the arrows and the sliver to, you know, talk to your financing companies that you work with. Yeah. And uh, just a couple of housekeeping items here. If you saw that poll pop up, please take a chance to answer that. We're curious to see, you know, how many of you have financing and if you have or haven't ad added financing, curious to understand, you know, how you've, have you felt about it? You know, why you haven't added it, you know, just, answer, get your, get your feedback on that piece. And then as we're going through the presentation, um, you're going to see a couple things in here. I just want to like, you know, call out to you. So some of the information that you're going to see has been redacted names, states, uh, because what we're going to be showing you today is real live feedback from our clients that they share with us from the companies that they're using for financing. So in fairness to the competition or not even competition, just the other financing partners out there, uh, we didn't want to put them completely on blast. So you'll see that we've redacted a couple pieces, but that's only because we're showing you like actual, you know, actual, um, you know, screenshots from, from real clients and real results that they're getting. So everything you're seeing today is like real from practices, just like yourselves that they're experiencing. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. And Phil, I'll turn it to you to start with, I guess, the most important piece, which is like, hey, why, why should I have financing? Why does buy now, pay later matter at all? Yeah, so the stakes on buy now, pay later, right? Whether you have it or whether you don't have it, both, all, all of this is important. We'll start from the top. Buy now, pay later is expected to grow 21.7% uh, on annual basis to reach almost half a billion dollars here in the US in 2023, okay? And so understanding there's demand inspires action, right? It's like, hey, this is growing. You should be tapping into that. A lot of you, uh, as far as I know, when we speak to you is you kind of hide your buy now, pay later only for those people who ask for it. The challenge is if you only do it with people that ask for it, just think about that, right? It's like 
the problem is that a static user might not actually like go and ask you if you have it, right? It's like, it's like, do I go to Louis Vuitton and say, Hey, do you offer financing? Right? Probably not. So you want to, you want to, you want to understand that like, Hey, there's high demand. You should definitely be offering it. Uh, businesses offering buy now, pay later. So, attract. Uh, I hate to cut you off. Did you say something about Louis Vuitton? Oh, I did. So can I, can I just double click on Louis Vuitton for a second, Phil? Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about Louis Vuitton before we move on to this next piece? My God. What do we got there? What do we think about that? <laughs> yeah, no, we are doing, of course, as always on our webinars, we're going to give away a beautiful Louis Vuitton bag. So stay tuned. I'm guessing there was a shout out for that, Chris. Stay tuned oh, for the Louis Vuitton raffle that we're going to be doing. Uh, yeah, people refuse to continue unless they know the Louis Vuitton you. is at the end of the rainbow, Phil. I hear you. Awesome. So uh, business offering buy now, pay later, attracted 20% new customers, right? The reality is, and we'll talk a little bit about this, is there's economic uncertainties, right? It's like, hey, folks, banks are collapsing, probably scaring consumers, right? If banks are collapsing and it scares consumer, do you think that they're more willing or less willing to offer, you know, to, to purchase a $4,000 package? Uh, experience 20% increase in repeat purchases, 30% increase in customer lifetime value. Buy now, pay later increases your conversion rate by 40%. So think about that as like all the deals that you do. If you had a buy now, pay later offering and you made it visible to your clients, could they convert? Would they convert? Because the chances are if they wanted a thing, but they don't know that you offer best in class financing, they probably are just going to say, let me go home and think about it should be leading with buy now, pay later, because you feel as though that it's an offering that is a fantastic offering and you know all the details of that offering so you can offer it confidently, right? A lot of you, when you talk about buy now, pay later, again, you don't mention it because you're not really sure is a person gonna get approved, not gonna get approved, what the rates are gonna be, uh, how much you're gonna get charged. And so there's a lot of hesitation, but when you go and you look at like an e-commerce site, they have it all over the place, right? It's like, it's it's intimate, the patient or the practice or the consumer can just see and click and do it. Well, that experience exists in your industry through RepeatMD, and we can go over that a little bit today, but you wanna be able to offer it because $4,000 out of pocket or 2,000 or 3,000 is a hell, of a, lot exp a hell of a lot more expensive today than it was. And even for that existing patient, it might not be like more expensive, like 4,000 is 4,000. But in their mind, given where the consumer fear index is today, it's like people are very cautious in buying big purchase items. And so we want to, we want to give them ways to still get what they want, but, you know, not have to ask, do you have credit options? Okay. Uh, you can reduce card abandonment right? Giving people flexibility, right? That's where it's like, hey, it's expensive, but oh, I can finance it. Let me purchase. And 56% of consumers prefer using buy now, pay later over credit cards because it's easier to pay and offers more flexibility. If you look at a credit card and I buy something for $4,000, okay? Credit cards are going to charge me between 25 and 30% if I don't pay it off in that next month. And so if I can do buy now, pay later, and I get a six and a half percent interest rate or nine or 10% interest rate, even 15% over the course of 24, 36 months, that's way less expensive for me, the consumer, than you know, dragging out my payments for you know 24 months or indefinitely in some cases. I just saw an article, and Chris, you might have seen this on The Economist talking about that we just hit 17 trillion uh, in credit card debt. Right, it's the highest is the highest consumer debt that we've ever had in the history of humanity. And you think about that, it's like wow, like credit cards, like people have multiple credit cards, those credit cards are maxed out, right? Add me it's, to the list. <laughs> the, the maxed out list? No, just no. I'm not maxed out. I'm, I'm responsible. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So buy now, pay later. It matters, and it matters today. But what matters for your business is actually understanding what the right options are. Yeah, that's fantastic. And look, you know, one of the ones I really like, just to double click, buy now, pay later, increasing your conversion rate by 44%. I, I think whenever your patients go home and they have ability to buy from their phone, you know, a little after the consultation, it's just going to be so nice to see, you know, additional sales. That's a big reason why, you know, if I had a med spa, I would want buy now, pay later so I can get those conversions. I love I love that one. I want to single that one out. 
Um, so all great reasons why buy now, pay later, you know, matters and why it's so important, just like seeing the lift across the industries. But Bill, let's get into a little bit about like the timing of it. Like, why does buy now, pay later matter more today, uh, maybe than ever before, six, 12 months ago? Let's let's get into some of the whys, if you could. Yeah. So, you know, no secret, tech stocks are down this year. They're starting to climb a little bit back up, but you know people that have saved money and they've invested in stocks, whether it be their 401k or whether it be individual investments, ETFs, mutual fund, stocks are down this year, right? That's that's a fact. I mean, if you look at the bank stocks, they're down 75%. Consumer fear index, it's the highest it's been since 1954. Why is that relevant to you? Is because the more fear in the market, the less likely they are to spend money with you, right? Some of you might be experiencing that, some might not be, okay? But overall, that's where we're at. Uh, mass layoffs happening all over the country, as you know, and these are white collar jobs. These are typically your clients. These are not like blue collar jobs are doing well, like restaurants are still hiring. White collar jobs, whether it's finance, whether it's tech, whether, you know, and everything in between, there's layoffs happening and there's hiring freezes happening. Right. And so those are typically your end consumer. And so it's a lot more relevant for you than it was if there was just blue collar layoffs. Yeah. Okay? And this last one's my favorite. Yeah. This, this one, this one's always shocking, right? It's like, Hey, $2,500 a month home mortgage payment. What did that used to get you in 2020? That got you a $750,000 home. Look okay. Due to, due to interest rates and where we're at today, it gets you a $400,000 home. So just think of yourself in your neighborhood and your community and say, Hey, what's the difference between a $750,000 house and a $400,000 house? Like we're in Houston, Texas. It's it's a radical difference between 400 and 750. It's it might even be even more radical I mean, in your neighborhood. So that's almost like a hundred percent decrease in your net worth and what you can get for twenty five hundred dollars. That's like just like anyway. I'm I'm very glad I, I financed my house in uh, November 2019. So I'm or 2020. So I'm very thankful for that. By the way, just gonna shout out my wife. Great job. Um. So Bill, like. That's that's obviously key, but uh, you know one of the things you like to tap on, like you're not just making this stuff up. Like this is this is what's out there in the world. Yeah, we we screenshotted this a while ago, and we used it for a couple of our um, presentations. And this was published in October, likely to dip into a recession. Well, think about what's happened from October till now. Okay, we're talking about the credit debt ceiling. You see that all over in the news. You saw banks collapsing, which you know is very reminiscent of 2008. Uh, the more and more that we go through it, a lot of people said recession. Some some of us might feel it, some of us might not. Like, where are we really? It's just something to really consider that even if it's not true, it's being marketed to the, through the media every single day. And that's a really important thing to understand is if it's being, hey, Chris, just so you're aware, you're Got sharing it. your screen and every time you pop up, it like pops up in front of all of us. All righty. Good to know. I did not know that was the case. So with, with that, if it's being marketed to your consumer every single day, whether it's true or not, it's going to be true in their minds, right? If the media is constantly pushing recession, 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 like it ha tends to actually create a recession. The same thing with inflation is like the more we talk about inflation, there's all these studies saying the more we create inflation through talking about and marketing it. And so if we understand that, we understand, okay, the rhetoric and the training for your staff, it is so important that we train the staff that we have financing and how to talk about it. But before we talk about the financing, today's presentation is about choosing the right financing partner, right? And so that really brings us into that this is a very crowded space. Okay, whether you're using Cherry or Care Credit, PatientFi, Prosper, Prima, like whatever it is, it's a very crowded space. And what we wanted to leave you with today are the questions and the things to look for when choosing the right partner. Okay. So, four truths about patient financing. Here are the things that we're going to cover in today's presentation. First is approval rates. Like, what are the different credit tr uh, tranches and how do they work? Hard and soft credit checks. There's not a patient financing company in the world that doesn't market soft credit checks. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Credit scores and term length, how it affects you and your bottom dollar, your bottom and your patients as well. And talking about how much are you actually paying, right? It's like a lot of times your financing providers will market to you the as low as pricing. 
And as low as means you got an 800 credit score and you're only doing three months of financing. Like there's absolutely no risk. It might as well be a credit card. But you need to know better than that. You need to know exactly what it is that you're paying. And okay. so, you know, most people on this call, you've probably never taken the time to read through the details of all the small print. Luckily, like our team, our legal, we did the due diligence in the process. And so what Phil is about to share with you are the findings that, uh, you know, were brought to our attention in the process of finding the right credit partner. And I think this is actually where the, uh, where the conversation gets really juicy and interesting. So let's start, let's start with number one, Phil, the truth about approval rates and how that works. Yep. So approval rates. This is just, you know, we get this question as well, right? It's like, well, why is my patient not get approved or this or that and the other thing? I think it's always just table stakes to understand how approval rates work. And like, you know, you know what you might know what your credit is. And so you can get a sense of what it looks like. So 580 to 619, it's called subprime credit. Okay, so Chris, go ahead and click. 33% of the time. Okay, so 580 to 619, it's a third of those people will get approved. And again, approval rates, by the way, this is just financing marketing and it's bullshit. It's like, oh, our approval rates are the best. The reality is everyone's approval rates are about the same. They might be up or down a little bit, but they're about the same, folks. And it's why like, is that? Because at the end of the day, it's they're all using the same banks. Okay. There's Sense. Synchrony Bank, which Care Credit uses, and about a hundred other financing companies. Okay. There's Cross River Bank, which Cherry uses, and about a hundred other a, a hundred other companies. There's Web Bank. They're all using the same bank. So they all have the same approvals. So when you're looking for a financing partner, the mistake is looking for the highest approval rate because they're about the same. What we're going to go over are actually things more important than just the highest approval rate. But if you have a near prime customer just across the board, it's about 74, 75% of the time. And if you have somebody that's prime, which is almost nine out of 10 patients. Okay. So this is just table stakes. You don't become a patient financing company if you can't do the averages. It doesn't make any sense. And if they're all using the same banks, they're about the same. So approval oh, rates same. is typically what people market the most, highest approval rates. That might be true. That might not be true, but it's about the same. What you need to be looking for are the other factors that we're going to go over. Okay. Also with approval rates, here is from one of these providers, and it's not just one, there's many of them, the terms and conditions. We're going to give you the questions to ask your, you know, your financing companies at the, you know, in the middle of this presentation. But here's another example that you need to be aware of your state. So for example, with this financing company, borrowers with a credit score of 660 cannot be approved. And that would, in this case, it's, it's, it's Iowa, Colorado has their own ex as well, but you need to ask like, Hey, if I'm getting paid financing, how do these approval rates work? And are there, are there any uh, scores or credit tranches that won't get approved automatically? So for example, 660 folks, that's not a low credit score. Okay. That's like, that's right there in, you know, in the middle. And so anyone below 660 snap doesn't get approved. Well, you're going to want to be aware of that. Right. So in this case, this company would be Iowa. I also, before we get going, I wanted to call out, you know, we have, we have a little over 200 folks here. Uh, or right, right under 200 folks here on this um, webinar. If you have some questions, there's a Q and A. You can see it on Chris's right now up there. You can just click that, and you can ask a question. We'll get the Q and A at the end. Not you, Chris. You don't click it because oh, I'm showing it, people now that I know everybody can see it. So I didn't know. I was, yeah. yeah, I got to figure it right. out now. Okay, so next page here. The truth about hard and soft credit checks. We did the research for you. So here you go. Here's soft credit <laughs> checks always. Okay. That means something very particular. And then soft credit checks only for pre-qualifications. So here's what every company also markets along with the highest approval rates is soft credit checks. Again, it's table stakes in today's. Can you go back, Chris? Yep. It's table stakes in today's game to have soft credit checks. The question is not soft credit checks anymore. The question is what happens when the patient actually accepts the line or accepts the loan? Okay. That's the real question. 
And in the case of this, the split in between is those who only have prequal means after prequalification, I accept the line. It 100% is a hard credit check and it will affect their credit. So when we talk about things of like, oh, like doesn't affect their credit, pre-approval, pre-qualifications don't affect the credit. But if the patient accepts, it will affect their credit. I'm not saying that you need to be concerned about that, but what I am saying is you need to be educated on that. So if your front desk is saying, oh, we have you know one of these providers and it's just soft credit checks, it doesn't hurt, hurt your credit. You need to be very careful about that because you don't want your patient to come back and say like, hey, mm-hmm. like that's bullshit. Like you lied to me. Now my credit went down two points or whatever the case is, right? That's a, that's like a very touchy subject, people's credit score. So you need to be aware of that. Okay. 100%. And so look, also go ahead and click Chris. When we talk about like the advertising these folks do, there, there's always one or two things that like there's disclaimers on. So you need to be aware of your disclaimers, no hard credit check. This company definitely does hard credit, uh, hard credit checks if they accept the line, instant decision. But then the very asterisk is may ask for additional information for some borrowers in order to determine approval amount, which may delay the timing of results. That's when you get income verifications. That's where they select certain patients to do a hard credit check on if their score is lower than their threshold again, one of these questions that we need to be aware of is like, hey, talk to me about your soft credit check policy. What happens when they accept the line? And what happens if the credit score is lower than, you know, a prime? Like, do you do any additional, you know, verification, income verification? Uh, does it ever become a hard credit, you know, hard credit check? Because they're not going to, they're always going to have an asterisk, right? It's just like credit card processing companies. The amount of disclaimers and asterisks in this, in financing or merchant processing is unbelievable. So that's why we're calling it out. Okay. Fantastic. So this is a lot. I'm going to take you through it very quickly. This truth is about credit scores and term links, okay? I'll tell you, it's very difficult to get the actual cost for these things because no one's very transparent. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about like the cost of things, okay? So Chris, go ahead and click. You've got, you've got two categories we're gonna focus on. That's prime credit scores at 700 plus and mid prime, which is 600 to 699. Anything under this, go ahead and click Chris. Anything under this threshold, is considered subprime, which becomes very challenging. Okay. So Chris click, it's going to be a common theme today, folks, Chris click, maybe hashtag Chris click. Okay. Three (laughs) months, take a look at this three months, 0% interest, 3.5% fee. This is what drives me crazy folks. This is what they advertise. This is what all the companies advertise. Fee as low as 3.5%, as low as 2.9%. This is what drives me batshit crazy because this is a three month term. This is three months with a prime credit score of probably like an 800. I'll tell you, you know this, I know this, Chris even knows this, okay? (laughs) That people with an 800 credit score are not going to just snap finance things because they don't need the financing. They probably will just pay for it. And they certainly are not going to do three months. But that's where all like the marketing goes towards it's like as low as 3.5% asterisk only for ex you know cr- prime credit score bullshit 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 right and so that's what i'm saying it's like you got to you got to you can't be sold on just that line we got to ask a deeper question okay so let's continue go ahead and click this is what we're looking for is mid prime why i want to get your attention on mid prime is this is 80% 8 out of 10 Eight out of 10 patients that are going to ask for financing are going to be mid-prime customers. They're not going to be 800 credit scores. Okay. They're going to be mid-prime between 660 and 699. Okay. The terms, three months, six months, 12 months, 18, 24 months. Let me ask you a question. And by the way, the chat's working. Go ahead and give me a little chat here if you're, if you're liking the energy because I'm, I'm, I'm heating up. I'm, I'm getting passionate. <laughs> the chat's working. Okay. Uh, terms, interest. If you are a mid-prime customer who can't afford a thousand, two thousand, five hundred dollars, are you going to do a three-month term or are you going to do a twenty-four month term? Right? It's gonna, it's not gonna be three months. It's gonna be 18 months, 24 months. We'll look at the interest your patient pays, 13 to 18.9, whatever, but look at the fee. 
The fee is 12.9 to 13.9%. And you were sold on a fee of 3.5%, right? And so you got to think about that is like, hey, what do the mid prime users, what is their fee for like your extended term, 18 months or 24 months? Tell me that fee. Tell me the fee of a mid prime with 24 months. What are they paying? What am I paying? Ask them the question. Ask them that specific question. Because if you go to their website, you're never going to find the answer to it. Okay, you're never going to find the answer on their website. Like you need to ask them the hard question, which is mid prime, extended terms. What does that look like? And God forbid that it's a subprime credit score, because look at the subprime 520 to 560, 561 to 659. Why you don't want the highest approval rates is God forbid this person walks in and gets financing <laughs> because you're going to pay a minimum of 9.9. In fact, the fee is so damn high that they won't even tell you what the practice fee is anymore. They'll just say it's starting at 9.9. And the interest is 36%. Like, like it's just wild. Or it's like, why yeah. even approve this person in the first place? And I and I tell I tell practice all the time, like, you better know this stuff or else you're gonna make a sale you're gonna live to regret. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, th this is th these things are really critically important for you all to understand. Like this right here, credit scores and term links, this is the question that you need to find. Okay, this is the question you need to ask. Okay, let's continue. So like, look, how much are you actually paying? Here are the companies that actually will tell you what you're paying. Here are the companies that they might never tell you. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't know what you need. You might need to send a subpoena in order to actually get the real question, the real the answer of what you're uh, paying. But once you do, you still have to do the math. Okay, so let's go. Let's do the math. Look at this. Real company, real dashboard, everything everything that I'm showing you today are from these financing companies. This is not RepeatMD graphics. These are real financing companies. This company advertises 2.9%. That's what they sell practices on. We'll call this They're, company Raspberry for the sake of conversation. So with, with all of this, okay, here's what's crazy. It's only one out of these practice, one out of these patients even got approved for the 2.9%. Everyone else, 6.9, 8%, 7.9, 7.9, 11.9. Like, who knows what you're actually charging? And what I what I really feel for, because you look, I worked in the, the smallest, I mean, the toughest industry in the world, in, in my opinion, which is the restaurant industry. The reason why it's so tough is because the margins are horrible, right? It's like like if you're a restaurant, if you make, if you, if you make 10 cents on the dollar, you're doing a good job. Okay. I owned a bunch of them. So like, it was very stressful as you can imagine with restaurants, if anybody, uh, works in restaurants in their life or owned one, you know, uh, you, you, you know, it's helped me. I have a four-year-old daughter. It's helped me with my patients. I'll tell you that. Um, so when we're looking at this, why, when you look at your PL at the end of the month and you're like, oh man, we did so great. We had a bunch of money in financing and you look at your PL and your net income is not where you imagined it to be is because of stuff like this, right? It's like you think in your mind, okay, 2.9%, I did a hundred thousand or 50,000 in financing, but Hey, like, why, why is my profit so small? Is anyone ever related to looking at their P and L and wondering where the money's at? Right? Like, like, yeah, that happens a lot. Well, it's stuff like this and it adds up. And so I just want you to be aware of it. Okay. And so, so let's, let's get, let's get into the specifics of the questions uh, that you guys are going to take down. And when Phil's done here, I highly recommend everybody to screenshot this, write it down as we go, because these are the specific questions that you need to be asking. So let's dive in here, Phil. Yep, so here's some questions to be asking. What are your standard approval rates per credit tranche? Your credit tranche is just for review. You're, you've got your subprime, you've got your prime, and um, what, what's the middle one, Chris? Have you been paying attention? Subprime, prime, mid-prime. <laughs> uh, does your soft credit does your uh, soft credit check remain a soft inquiry if the patient accepts the loan? So, a really important question here is like, does it remain a soft inquiry, right? Because you don't want you don't want to be like 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 happily rowing down. You know what is the analogy? Rowing down the wrong stream off the waterfall. Who knows? Just don't go don't go rowing with Phil. All right. Okay. What is your pricing per credit score tranche, term length, and promotional financing? That's like the screenshot I showed you before, which is like, hey, what does subprime pay at your extended length? What what does a prime customer pay? What like what do they all pay? And do I pay one consistent merchant practice fee? 
right? Really important to understand, like I was compare it like with financing, like a ticking time bomb. Like you want to understand that if that week, nothing but a 600 or 550 credit score walks in and gets approved, like, guess what? You're going to be out 15% per transaction. You're going to really want to be aware of that because you get to look at your patient base and like, you know, have a reality check and say, Hey, do I feel like my patients are prime? Do I feel like they're subprime? Like, you know, um, it, it's just something to consider because you want to do the math on yourself and say, Hey, is financing. Like, I believe wholeheartedly that financing is worth it because of all those pieces, it's certainly not worth it if you're not marketing it to your patients where you're talking about it openly. If you're doing financing and hiding it, it's like, why are you doing it in the first place? But if you are hiding it, ask yourself why. And if it's any of these things, then it's probably worth looking into, do you want a different partner in financing, right? If you're like, well, I don't want to use care credit because they charge me 20%. Like, okay, well, did you know there's more options out, outside of care credit? Do you think, do you think that the difference of spread is worth it to you to go out and look for a better provider? Do you think it's worth you doing the homework or the office manager doing the homework, right? It's like, let's not be complacent in business when especially the game is really difficult to win, where we chose a financing provider, you know, when we first opened up the business or we didn't do one at all. And we're just like, okay, with that complacency. Like we've given you other options to take a look at. You know, we have our opinions, of course, and we'll talk about who we ended up partnering with. But ultimately, you don't even just have to have one, right? The way that we do financing is very specific. There's other providers out there. But at the minimum, I want you to be aware of what the questions are and how to get down to the bottom line of what you're getting into. Because I know and you know that you don't want to do any sort of false advertising to your patient because it's not your business. Like you have plenty of other headaches. And the last thing that you want to do is like get blowback on something that you were just trying to serve your patients with, right? And, and let me throw in a, a fifth bonus question to everybody out there. When you're shopping and you're talking to finance companies, ask them this. Ask them if they have raised their rates anytime in the last six months, okay? Because a lot of these folks have raised their rates. Uh, so if you started with somebody six months ago, there's a chance that your rates are higher now, their approval rates are lower. So you just want to ask them that because if they've done it in the past, there's a good chance that another rate hike, as we all been hearing in the news, could be coming. And what happens is when the Fed rate uh, raises the rates on the, the economy as a whole, that gets filtered down to consumer credit. So just ask them that question and you'll know exactly you know, what kind of relationship you might be in store for. So, but that being said, like, this is all, I think everyone agree, like, this is all really great stuff. Like you would be, you would do well for your business to ask these questions. You owe it to yourself to ask these questions because these questions are going to be the difference in having a really, really great, really profitable month or a, a month where you're looking saying, shit, I sold a ton, but where is all the money at the end of the, at the end of the rainbow, right? And that's not where we want to be. And so with repeat MD, uh, Y'all know what we are, right? We're, we make these great rewards programs and rewards are designed to engage your patients and drive more sales and, and get them to convert at a higher level, but we're not a finance company. So we had the privilege of shopping around, asking these questions of everybody. And we interviewed everybody we showed you up here and more. And the solution we landed on was a firm. Um, and there's a reason why we landed on a firm. And we'll get into it in just a second, but um, does anybody know who else a firm works with? Well, there is one small little company that chose a firm, and that's Amazon. And Amazon is just uh, to name one of the many, right? A firm also works with Target, Walmart, Peloton, everybody, okay? These are some of the biggest players in their respective spaces. And Phil, let me ask you, does Walmart have a choice of who they can choose for buy now, pay later? Yeah, like like every betting choice the betting, the, <laughs> if repeat md's uh vetting process it's like a pebble on the mount of uh, the pebble a pebble on mount everest of the vetting that walmart or amazon would do to choose yeah, an, a, you know a partnership yeah. a partner for financing yeah right? so like, we feel yeah. pretty confident that uh, walmart amazon target and, and these major brands did some pretty serious research and then i'm sure you'd be curious okay now they've done the research why did they choose these groups well Think about what Walmart and Amazon especially focus on. Expediency and convenience, they want to make it so like Amazon, I swear I can think about a package and it's at my house. Like they make the purchase purchasing process easier than anybody on the planet. Walmart's not too far behind. They're catching up quick, right? And not only that, but it's got to be low cost because they're in massive volume. And so we said, how can we bring that to the space? You've got everything we need a firm. And so a firm is underwritten repeat MD. So we can bring repeat MD to our clients. 
Um, so if you like a firm and the benefits I'm about to show you, like just know like you have them through RepeatMD. This is not something like a firm does not approve clients like on a one-off basis. Like that's the one caveat. Like you can go to Cherry and Care Credit gets signed up. A firm, they approve basically our whole tranche of business. And that's how we're able to provide such like remarkably like good deals and rates for, for our you guys. But let's take a look, right? So on the left-hand column, you've got them. That's kind of the, the traditional financing route that's been available. On the right-hand column, you have what we found in the firm. And I think pretty quickly, you're going to understand why we tilted and went with the firm. Let's just, let's just start at the very top with approval rates. Inconsistent approval rates, a firm consistently known as having the highest approval rates in the industry. Phil did mention earlier that approval rates don't always like mean everything, but a firm has proven again and again that they have the highest approval rates. And it's a really simple reason why. The reason why is because they have the largest tranche of money. If you take the people on the left side of the screen here and you add up the amount of capital they have access to, it's probably like a fifth of a percent of what a firm has access to in the, you know, in the, in the tens of billions of dollars. And so basically more capital to deploy, the higher your approval rates are. So checkbox number one for a firm. Number two, Phil called out the soft credit checks versus hard credit checks. A firm offers a soft credit check throughout the entire process. There is never a hard credit check at any point in time. We don't want you to get caught lying to your client saying, oh yeah, it's totally soft until it isn't. Soft through and through, okay? Number three, financing terms as short as three months, as long as 24 months. A firm lets them go all the way to 36 months. And, you know, when we're talking about Jamie Dimon and difference. Yeah, potentially heading into a recession, the difference between 24 and 36 months is the difference between a $250 a month payment and $176 a month payment. Okay. That is a chasm when it comes to like monthly balances and bills. You'll see that play out. And that's another reason why a firm drives such extra lift in business. And we'll show you that in a second here. When you get to see some of our, our notes between Klarna, who some of you may know we partnered with in the past in a firm, but that's it, it's a huge, it's a huge key element. Good call out, Phil. And then late fees. This one I think is really underappreciated, right? Um the so old blockbuster late fees are, method. Yeah. And p- how much do people love to pay in those blockbuster late fees? Like if you can remember, it was like the only well, reason I would never it go was, back. Uh, how how much of a revenue driver was it for? Blockbuster, right? It's like it's like some of these financing companies live for your patients to like miss their payments so they can charge extra dollars on it, right? Oh, they it's make the it sweetest. incredible. Well, they make it incredibly difficult to actually pay the damn bill, and so you have to set it up. You, you know, it's like set it up. ACH doesn't work. I have to remember each. So yeah, yeah. It's so uh, yeah, it's huge. Also, think about this: when the patient gets a late fee, they're not going to call the finance company and bitch at them. They're going to call. And bitch at you because they're thinking you're the one charging them the late fee and it, you don't want to field those calls believe me okay here's another one with a firm it can be used anytime anywhere they don't have to be in front of you at the practice they don't have to stand there and fill out a form you don't take have to get them on the them. Phone. yeah you don't have to get on the phone and call somebody and get an approval department or fill it out you know or go home and get your uh you know your your last pay stub that, that's very a sexy feeling when you're trying to get approved for financing when they got to verify your income um they can use this 24 hours a day sitting back after the consultation having a glass of wine you know what let's go ahead and pull the trigger boom in and out in a few seconds and we'll show you that financing up to ten thousand. a lot of these guys are capped at ten thousand. i know that you have packages and bundles especially you know when you get into some of the surgical side that are going to see that um we have a firm all the way up to 20,000. I know that like, you know, we there's packages out there that go 60, $100,000. One note, um, but go Chris, ahead, w- yep. one note about the 20,000 is many of you on the call be like, well, I don't want to sell anything for $20,000, but you do have repeat purchases, right? Yep. And so there's two things to understand. It's like, hey, for example, we're partners with BTL. Maybe you sell them an M Sculpt Neo. Maybe they finance it. Maybe they love it. And they're like, hey, I want the M Tone. Okay, great. They can finance that other one, right? But if they're both call it four thousand dollars, it's eight thousand dollars. Their approval rate will go down dramatically based off the line of credit that they've used, right? So approvals are not just like a standard, like hey, this person's approved. Approval rates are also in consideration for how much of your line you've used and how how many payments you've made, how many good payments you've made towards that line already. So don't think of approval rates as like $10,000 one-time purchase. Yep. Think about, hey, what if they wanted to get a second thing? What if they wanted to get a third thing? What you know, Whatever the case is, and what if 
for example, if you're selling a larger package, if you have a $10,000 line and you're selling something between like five and $8,000, your approval rate will go down dramatically because you're using on the $8,000 example, 80% of the line on one purchase. I've, I've got some purchases. I've got two active purchases at a firm to Phil's point. Like you can use a firm multiple times within the credit line. So having a bigger credit line means more potential for purchases. Mine's used for dumb stuff on Amazon. Your patients are going to be able to use it for more exciting things when they come and see you. But it's a great point. Having more, more financing available means more purchases. A firm yeah. does make that possible. So let's move on here. Bill made it very clear the difference between being a 2.9% versus a as low as 2.9%. With a firm, this I think to me is the absolute biggest selling point. It is a consistent 3.99% financing fee across the board period. If you remember back to that chart, the 3.5% was reserved for prime people in a three month window. This is what you pay if they have a subprime, near prime, mid prime, uh, prime time, you know, prime ribeye, I don't care. Any kind of prime, it's 3.99% to you the practice, which is slightly more than the swipe fees you're paying to give your patients affordability to buy packages that they probably weren't otherwise able to afford. Because as we know, the majority of people that use financing are the people that weren't going to spend four or $5,000 cash yeah. out of pocket. I want and to isn't it nice what you to said. know that you don't have the risk of paying 9, 10, 12% on those purchases? I want to repeat what you said just now. Okay, so important. Visually, it does not matter, okay, if your patient has a 550, a 650, a 750, an 850. It does not matter if your patients are going to get 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months. None of that matters with the firm. It is 3.99% across the board. So we talked about the ticking time bomb. This is how you diffuse it. Because now, as long as they get approved, you know exactly what you're paying, okay? That is really important. Just knowing every time when someone gets approved gives you the confidence, it gives you the true confidence of actually recommending it. We've had some questions coming through, which are, hey, is a firm good for my scale because I'm not at the scale of Amazon? Hey, is a firm good for medical practices because I've heard that they, you don't, they don't work with medical practices? Number one, we'll show you. But yes, a firm, you know, for all these purposes is whether you're mom and pop or whether you are Amazon, we did a partnership, a national partnership with a firm to bring them in the space along with everybody. Okay. So what that means to you is they know the space. They love the space. They love the patient profile. They love you all. Like we're all in a firm. They are a good fit, whether you're small or big. Doesn't matter if you're selling like a lot per month or a little. Okay. Yes. The second piece is for medical practices, they made a conscious choice to get into this industry. And Chris, I think this really resonates for the very next slide is, next slide. Oh, actually it'll be slide after this. Okay. We'll show you, we'll show you, we'll show you the difference of when we used Klarna, who was a partner, right? Originally a partner, very similar to a firm. But the small difference between a firm and Klarna made a huge difference was actually spending the resources to enter into medical aesthetics or, or the wellness industry. That is the big difference is, you know, with Klarna and with a firm, a firm made the conscious choice and spent the resources and the partnership with us to enter this industry. And you yourself could not go to a firm and say, hey, I want to use a firm for my practice. You can use a firm through RepeatMD. But if you called a firm today and said, hey, I want to use a firm, I want to use you guys, repeat them, do you have this awesome webinar? Yeah, I'm all in, a firm, a firm. They wouldn't be able to work with you. But through repeat MD being a client of ours, you are absolutely able to get a firm and you get the lowest rate, right? If you look at a firm's rates, like 6.99 across the board, but because of the volume and the collective volume that we do together with our practices, we get a much lower rate. Okay. Yeah, you're getting a better rate because of the pooling effect that you get through repeat MD, just to be clear, right? It's it's managed risk. And so let's let's take this consistent fee and let's drive this home back to the analogy Phil had earlier. So remember when he showed you the two point as low as 2.9%, but it can be as high as 7.9, 7.9, 11.9. So 
let's let's take a look at this. This is ten thousand seven hundred seventy four dollars and forty one cents of total finance transactions through a supplier that you're all familiar with, and in fees on these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven transactions, the client paid nine hundred fifty three dollars, an average of eight point nine percent. That is a pretty healthy chunk, right? That's more than Uncle Sam takes home with them in most states and on sales tax. When you take that and you look at a firm and what a firm provides, that would take those fees and bring them all the way down to $429.90, an average of 3.9%, savings of more than $500. That's why financing and knowing your rate is so critical. And also the value here is like, because it's plugged into repeat and you get all the benefits, you get the great rate, you get the financing built in. And for most of our clients who take this stuff seriously and use it, like it means that not only are you gonna save thousands on your financing, if you're a heavy financing volume already, it also means that you're probably gonna get the repeat MD program and the software and service, everything that comes with it at, at, at no additional cost because we're gonna save you so much money on your financing that it's gonna pay for the program in its entirety. So you'll have all the upside of all the other really wonderful things that we do, including being part of the community that allows you to have access to such great rates that other people only dream of. So like that's part of the, like the huge benefit. And what we want to show you, like you talk about scale, my question is like, hey, wouldn't you love your single location to have the efficiencies and speed of processing that Amazon has? And of course you would. It's just, you typically don't have the resources to go out and build it. So you're stuck having people fill out papers and dial in phone numbers. With us, we're going to bring it straight to you. So let's take a look at the Affirm checkout process using the Repeat MD system uh, right here. And this is on our V2 technology. So the click through. Let me just start it over so I can kind of narrate this a little bit here. So I'm in, I pick my, I pick my package. Okay. I add it to my cart. And this is from a live customer, by the way, from this is one a, of our alpha users. 100%. So I've added the package to my cart, right? 2,700 bucks. I am going to check out now. I'm going to check out now. Okay. And I'm going to use a firm. So I click into a firm and this is real time. So we're not like we're, this is happening in real time. I click place order. Going to load up, put in my phone number. Okay, redacted so you guys don't call Phil, you know, late at night with all your questions and off-color jokes. Uh, click continue to process, get a little four-digit verification code that pops up for you automatically. Boom, boom. Processing your info may take a few seconds. I pick my package. So, okay, let me go for 36 bucks, $89 a month. That's very sexy compared to 246. Here's my payment plan, my bank account that it's attached to, reviewed, confirm, and I am now off to the races. Like, can you design a simpler financing experience? No, you cannot. This is why Amazon and Walmart have chosen to use a firm. This is why we chose to use a firm. One of the reasons, think about how many transactions you will get across the finish line if you make it this easy for them to buy a $4,000 package. Yeah. I don't need to go home and talk to my husband or wife. I don't need to check my credit lines. I don't need to get my income verification. I don't need to call somebody or fill out a form. I just have to click a few buttons on my phone and I get the treatments I want and I am home happy as a camper. And the best part is this is all non-recourse financing. So whenever you finance a package and you get paid, your money is in the bank account the next day and the client it's between them and a the firm to make those payments. Like I can't think of a better relationship. And Phil, I know you want to touch on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted I mean, something, something that was funny is um, Cassie works on our team and she's our product marketer. So her and our team uh, put these presentations together. And this morning I was like, Cassie, I need uh, before, like, I need like a you know slide by slide sort of comparison, a video comparison of approval, like you know versus you know other financing, and like you know with like a timer on top. And she spent like the whole day looking for one. She's like, that's not how any of them work. Like, you have to scan it. You like one of them, you have to call in the other person. Like, you have to fill out a, a, an application. It gets sent to the practice. Like, they have to prove it. It's like this wild process. So we couldn't even do like a versus, like a sort of Pepsi challenge, and show you we just financed a package for three grand in less than a minute. And that's the power of not only a firm, but using a firm through RepeatMD because your patient can do that. It's a minute, folks. They can do that sitting in the chair. They can do that sitting in the lobby. They can do it watching Netflix. They can do it, you, you know, send them a text message for, you know, we just had Mother's Day. They can click and they can finance these things. It's one minute. And the difference is a lot of you are paying about 3% for credit card processing. This is 3.9%. This is 0.9% more for a massive amount of volume that you're probably missing out on. Okay. Yeah. So folks, it's, yeah. Yeah. 
if you, if you get it, you get it, right? And you get how important this is and how massive a win this is for the industry and space. If you don't get it, um, ask around, find out, talk to your other practitioners who are using it, and then and then clue in. And then Phil, I know you want to talk about this earlier. This is what we kind of were trying to get to is yeah, a firm versus Klarna. We we started with the Klarna, so to kind of clear up why we made the transition. And if we We've haven't already, let's yep. Su- super simple. All fifty states are covered. I know there's some Canadians on the chat. We're coming for you in Canada. Don't you worry. We're already approved in Canada. Now we just have to get this whole USD and Canadian currency thing worked out because you don't have the American dollar over there. So we're, Nobody we're, else <laughs> might uh, in a couple of months, huh? <laughs> yeah. So we're working through that. Uh, it's coming coming soon, the next six months. Um, but all 50 states are covered through a firm. In Clarna, it was like 46 um, way higher logo recognition. So we noticed when we were, when we were, uh, sort of beta testing this, that people just recognized a firm more. And in two months we have eclipsed what we did in six months with Klarna. Your patients are using a firm like crazy. They're getting approved fast and they recognize the brand. So, you know, for us, again, as I recommended to you from one business owner to the, to the other, Do not get complacent with your business. Just because you made a decision six months ago doesn't mean there's a better, more innovative way. The way that I tell you that is the way that we live that here at PMD. We went with Klarna. We knew they were way better than the other patient financing providers. But then when we worked with the firm, we realized there was one step above that. And so that's why we moved to a firm. And we're we're super happy that we did through our beta. We've released it now on the V1 platform. And in two months, it's done more than Klarna did in the last six months. And so it was a, it was, it was a great decision and um, we're really happy for it. Yeah, no, it, it's been huge and, and it'll continue to be huge into the future. And, and what a firm is doing, it's creating more of what we like to call the magic moment. Okay. And so let me, let me take you on a little, little vision quest of the magic moment. Okay. And anybody on this call that's, that's owned a business or been in business for a while has, has had one of these days. And what I mean by one of these days is you've got, five consultations lined up, scheduled. Um, two of them don't show up on you. Um, one of them ask you for something so crazy and out of left field, like you, you just have to go sanity check yourself after the meeting. And then the other two say, well, I got to think about it. I don't know. Um, you know, let me go home and talk to my husband or some, some, some mixture of no. <laughs> and you go home and you're kind of dragging. Like, it's like, it's been a long day. It's been a hard day. And you're having dinner or you're sitting down, you know, watching TV, trying to relax and it's been a tough day. You get a ping, a notification on your phone. And one of those people that you talk to, they said, I got to think about it. They did just that. They went home and they thought about it and they looked at their phone. They saw the package. They reviewed it. They looked at the notes and they said, let me go ahead and just see what I can get approved. Let me check out a firm. Okay. Let me look at these plans. Okay. 30, you know, 89 a month. You know what? Let me just do it. And then you get a notification just like Peggy percent. Pritchnicki up here. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, change, let's redact her last name in the redaction process. And you see that you sold a package from one of those clients at 10 p.m. at night, or 9 p.m. or 8. What does that do to your dinner? We talk about all the time, like what keeps you up at night at business. Well, I'll tell you what helps you sleep at night. It's moments like this where you're making money while you're not actually at the business. That is the difference between working in your business and working on your business. The, the difference between having being a, a worker in your business and having a business that works for you. When you can make money in sales whenever you're not at the physical practice or when your doors are closed, now you have a business that's more valuable, more investable, more profitable, and gives you greater peace of mind, all because you're opening up your client's access to you at all times of day. And that's exactly what this provides. It's those magic moments that can literally turn around your day, turn around your business, and give you the business that you guys deserve. Bill? I think that was super well said, Chris. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and look, let's get into some of the uh, the final pieces here. And we appreciate you guys letting us walk you through all the educational aspect of it. And of course, we're not going to leave you high and dry. Um, one of the big things we want to do is make sure you have all of the print materials, everything you need to educate your patients on a firm and what it means to them. So I'd like everybody to just take a second Yep. And scan the QR code here, Bill, if you'd these, like to talk about that. Yeah, these are some materials that we've uh, created for you. The The QR code will direct them to your specific app. Okay, so it'll be custom for you. So when they scan, this, these are rat cards, no different than the rat cards that you probably have in the practice, advertising Botox and, and whatever else. 
you need to be forward facing with your financing. We're also working on a few other uh, special surprises when it comes to like in office marketing material. Uh, we're also about to launch here in the next uh, couple of weeks, our resource center that gives you the resources to download and promote on your emails or promote on your um, Instagram, social media channels, all those other pieces. But while you're on the webinar, simply you can just scan this. If you're a RepeatMD client, you'll be first in line to get all these new rack cards where they're ready to go. Just add your QR code. We'll do that. We will pay for the shipping. We will pay for the design. We will pay for the FedEx. That's our gift to you. Um, so yeah, let, we're, we're sending those out. So feel free to scan that. Awesome. I'm going to put up a little poll here if possible and just see, I want to see who on the call, how many of you guys already have RepeatMD just so we get a good feel of uh, how many of those we're going to be sending out here. Okay. Uh, so I think everybody's got a time, had time to scan that. Uh, take a picture if, you know, it's kind of how you do the QR code, but take a screenshot if you can't scan at the moment. FYI, we're going to move on and we're almost at the end, almost a Louis Vuitton giveaway time. So we're getting there. We just got a couple more little highlights to share with you just so you know a couple things we got going on. So starting with our Q2 shop competition, Bill, tell them about yep. the shop competition and what that means. This is just a reminder, folks, uh, RepeatMD clients, we do a shop competition every quarter. We send you somewhere tropical. In this case, it's the Dominican Republic. Um, it's April 1st through June 31st. So if you're a new client, you're just onboarding, that's okay. Next quarter, we send you to another destination. This is just a reminder that all your shop sales, we always, you know, it's cumulative for that quarter, right? Whatever you sell, and then we, you know, you can win. And if you win, we send up your office up to six people on an all-inclusive trip to wherever we're sending you. That's flight, that's hotel, it's all-inclusive, beautiful trip. money to gamble with? I don't know about that. Maybe if we send you, um, we sit, <laughs> we, so I think we've already sent Cancun, uh, Costa Rica. We're sending someone on, or we just, someone just won last, uh, last quarter. Um, and there was another, I can't remember the third one, but regardless, it's the Dominican Republic this time, each quarter we do it. So look, what's good about these, even if you're just getting started is get the habit of selling, get the habit of signing patients up. The most important thing if you're a repeat MD client that I always tell people when I, especially if you meet me in person, love to meet you is the app, what you have, right? The offerings, the firm, the memberships, the packages, it doesn't mean anything unless your front office is talking about signing up for the rewards program, having that script down cold, sign up today and receive $50 towards any service that needs to be part or whatever your offer is. That needs to be a part of every new patient onboarding and every existing patient that's not signed up. You need to talk about it because rewards is the way to buy engagement. Another thing that I talk about about buying engagement, being repeat and client, is the truth is that if you're you know, if you have your own app, you work through RepeatMD, no one, no, none of your patients are just going to be exciting. Like, oh, there's another app to download. There's got to be something in it for them, right? If you just said, download our app and you're like disappointed, well, why aren't people not like scanning this thing? It's because they have to know the benefit, right? Would you sign up? No, you have to know the benefit. The benefit is you sign up today and you receive this offer. And then for every, every visit that you come in, you get something else, whether, you know, whether it's a reward or towards a service, whatever. The reason why your rewards app, right? Why you use one is to buy that engagement to lead into buying memberships and packages and, and showing them financing because that magic moment will happen. Greg on the chat, right? Greg, I don't, like we definitely have to reach out to you to know what you've been doing here. But Greg on the chat was talking about, uh, I sold 35 packages. I guarantee you, Greg has a lot of people signed up for the app. Because you can't sell 35 packages if you don't have a lot of users, right? And it's got to be part of the process. And where it becomes all worth it is what the magic moment Chris just talked about, which is when you're at home and you're making sales without having to be in the practice. That's why it's worth it. That's why people do it, right? And, and Phil, I want to add, you know, I get calls from clients all the time. And a lot of the calls go into one of two buckets. On the one hand, I get clients to tell me RepeatMD doesn't work. I've had it. It's not doing anything. I, I, I repeat MD. I, I don't want repeat MD. On the other hand, I get clients calling excited, the Greg's of the world that are doing 40, $50,000 a month in additional package sales that they weren't doing before that they're making the sales they are engaging their open houses are bigger and busier. They're, they're selling. And I'll tell you the truth. The, the difference is not repeat MD. This client that's selling 50 packages a month has the same repeat MD technology built custom for their practice. The client that says it doesn't work 
it's the this, this same technology. So why is one client getting all the results and the other client isn't? And I promise you, it's not your patients, right? Because I'll have somebody say, my patients don't use it. Well, your patients are very similar to the patients over here that are using it. Bill's 100% right. The difference is, is your team talking about it? Are you using it? Are you making the most out of it? You're driving it. If you are, you will be in this category and it will change the game for your business for life because it, ha it has, it can do everything for you that it's doing for other people. The only difference is, is your team talking about it? Are you getting the most out of it? Are you utilizing it? If you feel like you're in the first category and you're not utilizing it, you're not talking about it, you don't have enough, reach out to us. Like, don't, you're not alone. Like we have a client success team. We want to take ownership and help you get there. So please like if, reach out to us, come talk to us, let us figure out what we can do and give you some of those tips and strategies on how to get it like re-engaged, reactivated. Cause I want everybody on this call to win. And yep. that's also why we do these trips to get the team excited, give them something to aim for. And we also like, we're helping on the patient side too, because the patients, when they work with you, something to talk to them about is like, they're entered for a chance to win a trip to the same destination, maybe not the same hotel in the same time, but we're going to, we're <laughs> going to incentivize, yeah, it depends if you love them, right? Like, Come on down with us. All right. So we make sure that the patient also has some vested interest too. And this is repeat MD, literally investing back into the practices, giving your patients a little extra, you know, nudge to say, Hey, come on, like get that beach body, get this, go ahead and get your, your body contouring. Cause we might send you to the Dominican Republic. And that is like, that's like a, like a true Testament to our commitment. I think about any other brand you work with and do they do this? Do they go the extra mile? We, we absolutely will. So reach out, let us know how we can go the extra mile for you. It's our passion. It's what we're here to do. And, uh, I don't know if we're like, we're a little past time. So I don't know if we're going to do Q and a, but yeah, I know we're going to, yeah, let, let, let's hop in Q and A real quick, and then okay. we'll do the we'll do the giveaway. Okay. Um, so, some of the questions. One question that came up, of course, is V two. When is when is V two coming out, right? And so we'll send more information on that. We'll have a webinar talking about V two uh, for clients. Just so you know, it'll be uh, early to mid July when we launch this. We're going through beta and all the process there, and so we'll keep uh, keep you up to date. You'll be the first to know of your client when we can launch a V two with you. Um, some other questions here. Um, Tina said, "Are we better cutting off the middleman and going directly to the bank?" Um, I, I guess Tina, the the, uh, the the question I'm laughing at Travis's comment that was truly great. Um, are we better to cut off the middleman? So look, I think the question that you're asking Tina is: Should I do self financing? Right? Should I should I create my own like payment plan, payment options? Um, yeah, that's up to you. Right? It's can you float the payments? That's the question. When you use a firm and you use RepeatMD, you get paid the entire amount the next day. I think Tina's question there, is, can she go to well? Let, let me add, there's, there's two. There's it. right. There's okay. two questions there, right? And so, if you want to do your own like banking, right? The challenge with that is you don't get paid all up front the next day, and for the 0.9 percent more, you might as well get paid. Right. And the second piece of that is a firm is non recourse financing. So I saw another question on that, which is more along the lines of, hey, um, what happens if patient defaults? Right. And with the patient defaulting, you still get paid. There's no recourse to you. They don't go in and say, hey, you know, Sandra defaulted. We need to take the money back. So that's an important piece there. Okay. Um, as far as going directly to the bank, um, yeah. I don't, I, I don't know if your regional banks do sort of like one-off financing. I've never heard of that, so I can't really speak to it. Yeah, and Sandra, I'll just tell you, I, I don't think that's going to be a, a, an actual option. Um, that's, there's a reason why they have the the partners. Uh, they're not like it's it, it's. You, I think you'd have to get a bank charter, and, and that's pretty much impossible thing to do. But uh, if, fair question yep. to ask. I, I could see why you'd ask for sure. Okay. Um. What type of marketing materials does a firm offer? So I think we answered your question today with we will design and send out the materials for you. We also will send you a resource center that you can download and use on social. It's really important, folks, that when you're working with these things is you take responsibility to market your own offerings. And so what I would say is if you have an email and you have social media and you have a person doing your Instagram, like you should be promoting the fact that you're doing financing with one of the biggest companies in the world, 
because I guarantee you, if you're not a re- like, if your competition like does not have RepeatMD, they definitely don't have a firm. And if you look and do a little, if you go through, you know, different uh, med spas in your area, and you notice that you have a firm, which is the biggest logo in the world when it comes to the financing, and they don't, you should be marketing and taking responsibility of you marketing the fact that you do have your own rewards app and financing through a firm, that's a powerful combination. And I would be thinking about your creative content and how you're going to email and how you're going to post that on your Instagram and all those other pieces, because it's very powerful. And it's also blasted all right in there in the rewards app, like a firm is front and center. So we're trying to retarget them, engage them every time they open the app as well. So 